Australia, New Zealand, and or the Asia region. So, ladies and gentlemen, di na ako magpapaligoy-ligoy pa. I take honor uh, in introducing to you the Chief Operating Officer of HR Management and uh, Business Solution Inc. None other than Mr. Anjo Mines. Anjo, take the floor, please. All right. Good morning, sir. And good morning, everyone. I feel so honored to being introduced by my boss. I'm very happy to be you know, uh, here seated with you today in this webinar called Coaching is the New Normal. I'm kind of a little bit uh, worried because I knew that our Zoom can actually accommodate 500. The, what I am seeing right now is that we have topped out our meeting room to 100. So we're still checking as to how we could possibly expand the the capacity of the Zoom because I know we have we have a 500 uh, subscription, so we're still checking right now. But in the meantime, if you would have friends or colleagues who are unable to log in, we are live on YouTube. So uh, Willie, if you could please, Willie is my colleague in HR MBSI. Willie, if you could please post the YouTube link and also in our Viber group and also in our in our email messages that we've sent them so that in case they are unable to log in they can still be able to do so in our YouTube account, all right? So welcome to our Coaching is the New Normal webinar. Now you would see in my background, which is over here, and you've also seen it in the video, we have, we've had what you would call a twin summit, which is happening on February 4 and 5. That's already. And this twin summit happens to be focusing on two HR diamonds, organizational justice and total rewards. Now you might say, what is organizational justice all about? Well, it's basically a new term, a new buzzword for what you would call employee relations, labor relations, and industrial relations. So the, the new coin term for these three types of uh, employee, industrial, and labor relations is called organizational justice. It's a term that has been, uh, that has been created uh, to really put focus on, on the needs for, for justice and equality and fairness in the way we deal with our employees and the way also with laborers too, with, with the labor employers too, okay? So Authority JBJ or Authority Josipo Simenez is the, you know, the chief guy who had casually coined that term organizational justice. Now, the other HR diamond that which is called total rewards is what you would call compensation and benefits. So for those of you who are compensation and benefits experts, total reward is not new to you. You probably have heard of it uh, so, so often that it's become a, a normal word for you. But to those who are unaware of what total rewards is all about, it's really about compensation and benefits. And the Twin Summit is really all about that, understanding labor relations and understanding compensation and benefits too. So what we will do is we will be with uh, so many number of speakers, all, all, uh, all veterans in terms of these particular subjects, and they're actually luminaries in their own end, in their own uh, capabilities. And in fact, later on, I'll be flashing on screen the contents of that Twin Summit. So at least you have an idea of what it would, you know, what it would be like to be joining such a Twin and how you could possibly learn from us and be updated, right? Today's session is really all about coaching, understanding how coaching could possibly provide you with the right direction as a leader, as a manager, or perhaps even as a, as a parent, you know, how could you possibly coach your, your, your kids or perhaps even the people uh, working around you, diba? So marami tayong paraan. We have so many to possibly use coaching as an approach, all right? But before anything else, before we get into coaching, I'm happy to see that my participants' number have increased, okay? So lakalampas tayo ng 100. And for that, I'm really very thankful that we are able to log into Zoom uh, beyond the 100 capability. But anyway, we're still live on YouTube. You can still uh, choose to go via YouTube and it's just as easy to watch us. People are asking, do we get a certificate after this? Certainly, if you request for it, you know, um, all you have to do is just request us for, with our Viber group. You can just chat with us and we'll be able to issue to you a certificate of completion for having attended today's webinar. Also, people are asking, is there a presentation material that will be sent? You know what I would recommend? Guys, you need to have a copy of this, of this presentation material because it's already on your screen. I tell you, the best way by which you could possibly screenshot something 
is just press the Windows button and the print screen. And that's it. For every slide that you would see, just press a uh, Windows keyboard, the Windows button and the print screen. And you get and you get a copy of the of the screen right away. So we want to take photos if you want uh, an image and so on. Feel free to do so. I am not as you know stingy when it comes to presentation materials because I know you're going to be learning a lot from it. So don't worry about it. If you need a full copy, just send me an a message. I'll, I'll be more than willing to provide you so. But in the meantime, if you're if you just would want a copy for yourself right away, press the Windows key and print screen, and you have your screenshot. All right, so it's that easy. All right, now, coach, we'll get into it. Right, let me give you the first fifteen minutes of this presentation to get your feet wet on coaching, and then we will have a game. Is that okay? Give me a thumbs up if that's okay with you. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Yep, I can see some thumbs up there. All right. You can see the reaction box there in our Zoom. You can actually just uh, press the thumbs up and I'll be more than willing to. Um, there you go. I see Bea uh, giving her thumbs up and so on. All right. So now that I have the. Paano daw mag thumbs up then? Thumbs up. Ito lang mama. Dali lang po yan. Ito lang yung Zoom. Yeah. Okay. So in the meantime, if I may just start sharing my screen for you, and we will be a, on our way. All right, one moment. Okay, and where's my PowerPoint? There you go. So guys, I was wondering, can you actually see my screen now? Uh, if you could see my screen, I would appreciate that. Okay. All right, this is called coaching as part normal, all right? So if you notice, yung coach, the original coaching title is coaching in the new normal, but we decided to change it and, and call it as coaching is the new normal. Why is that? It's because as leaders, and now that we are faced with this pandemic and so on, it is imperative for us to be able to provide the right direction, continuously uh, hone our employees, our colleagues, and our team members you know, uh, acclimatize, if I may say, in the new normal and be able to get into the rhythm of performing excellently in our respective teams, right? And as I would um, actually see here in my next slide, okay, let me just remove that one. Okay, we can only see a short ahead, but we can see plenty there that needs to be done. This is a quote coming from Alan Turing, the British computer scientist, who actually feels that there's still so much to explore out there. And so this is what coaching is all about. So once again, mabuhay, welcome to our webinar on coaching is the new normal. I'd also like, would like to say, hey, I'd like to say to my friends in Cambodia, my colleagues in Cambodia, uh, and also let's say, xin chao to my colleagues and friends in Vietnam, mingalabar to my colleagues and friends in Myanmar, and ni hao to my colleagues in China. So as Sir Freddy had mentioned, I was in this area, part of the Asia Pacific region as a regional trainer. And I have actually um, met new friends, a lot of them, invited them to join me in this coaching uh, pre-session. And they actually woke up early. Some of them woke up as early as 6.30 a.m. just to be able to log in. So very oh, thankful. Yeah. Very thankful that they could actually join us because there's a time difference. So happy to have our colleagues in the Asia Pacific joining us. All right. If I may just reintroduce myself. So once again, I am Andrew Mines. I am currently the Chief Officer of HR Management and Business Solutions. So I've been uh, a dynamic facilitator and a seasoned trainer over the last few decades. And I've had experiences with the banking industry, with the semiconductor industry, and with the fast-moving consumer goods industry. All right. So some of the companies that I have served, which I'm sure you see in the screen, would be BASF Finlay in Sri Lanka, which is my Simon. I also worked for Unilever Philippines uh, and Sir Freddie was a colleague back there in Unilever in the Philippines. I also worked with the Philippine National Bank again together with Sir Freddie in Philippine National Bank. Analog devices in here in General Trias Cavite where I am currently residing with my wife Orange and incidentally Orange is also the Environment Health and Safety Manager of Analog De and that's where we met and that's where our love affair blossomed right and then after which I joined um, SM Super Malls, which is, of course, um, you're probably familiar with SM because you're always there. But now that we're in a new pandemic, in this pandemic, 
uh, I'm sure medyo umuunti ang inyong visit sa SM. And then more recently, I was with Australia and New Zealand Bank where my regional uh, training capability was actually home. All right. So uh, in terms of education, my formative years from elementary all the way to my high school and college and master's degree, I only had one school, the Univers University of the Philippines in Diliman. So pagpasensya nyo na kung yung mga ideologies misan eh kinikriticize ng gobyerno pero lalabas natin ang politika doon but only had one school in mind, UP Diliman. And my passion for a career in human resources, particularly with talent development, stems from my mission of really becoming an agent of growth and change to all the individuals that I touch. And that is why coaching will, will be something that I would use to be able to touch with you and be able to connect with you and engage in a manner by which personal effectiveness and leadership effectiveness will be honed, all right? You can find me on Facebook, in LinkedIn. In Facebook, you just type your practical coach in the search box and you'll be able to see my profile. Okay, so we have similar, uh, several webinar agreements here. You know? It's actually quite easy to understand, but what is important is that if you have any questions, if you would want to participate in this webinar, <laughs> free to put it in our chat box, you know, and, and Willie will be able to read those questions for you. And we, I'll try my very best to answer them in the best way possible. Okay. Let's be respectful and candid with our, uh, with the way we interact with other individuals. Uh, we can take notes. You can, again, as I mentioned, you can uh, print screen if you want. Okay. You can share your experiences from others and, and learn from others as well. And if you want to communicate with me, you can use the chat box as well. You can do the reaction button and what have you. Also, let's respect the confidentiality of what we would be learning here because some of the information uh, would actually be uh, for the privileged few. So it's happy, um, it's high time that you get to some, learn some of these and while at the same time, keeping some of the concepts new para to be part of your trade secret, all right? And today, who wants to learn? Huh? I'm sure every one of us wants to learn. And you know what Henry Ford says? Anyone who stops learning is old, whether he's 20 or 80. But anyone who keeps learning stays young. So who wants to keep young? Who wants to stay young? I do. We all do. And therefore, by continuously learning today, we'll be able to keep ourselves young and be able to really face the, uh, the, the current pandemic that we would have. Right? Okay. Let's get into coaching. Person, why discuss coaching? What is the relevance of coaching? Why do we need to study this? I thought that coaching is only for sports coaches, like for example, in basketball or in soccer and football or in tennis, you have a coach. But why is that you know, coaching has become a buzzword when it comes to, let's say, in the leadership space? Why is it becoming part of a new normal to be able to be a coach more than just being a leader or a manager? Well, why don't we define coaching to begin with? Coaching is really all about partnering with your clients, with your colleagues. If you don't want to be called a client, you can say a colleague, okay? a team member, a son, a child, someone who is under you, someone who is actually beside you, someone who works with you. Okay? You partner with that person in a thought-provoking and, of course, a creative process that would possibly inspire this person to maximize his potential as well as his his or her professional potentials too, okay? It's basically client-driven. In other words, it's the, not the coach. For example, you are the coach or the leader. It's not you who drives it, but it's really more of the, of the coachee, the one who is being coached. You'll find out later as to why, right? And then the focus when it comes to coaching is that it's all about goals and direction for that person. It's about creating outcomes out of those goals and possibly managing a personal change with that individual that you are possibly coaching, right? So that's the uh, basic definition of coaching. Put it differently, it could also be a form of development called a coach. That's you, right? You are actually able to support a learner or a client or a colleague, what have you, in achieving a specific or professional goal. Usually, a coaching session would not just be a one-time session. It mm, takes several iterations. It's, it takes several sessions. In fact, it's an ongoing discussion between you and your coachee, all right? It will typically take place as a conversation 
It will a lot of conversation between you and the coachy, and it focuses on helping the coachy be able to discover the answer for himself. In other words, you as a coach, you do not provide the answers. You let the coachy discover for what the answers are. In fact, you'll be surprised, you know, people are much more likely to engage with solutions that they have come up with themselves. In other words, kung nanggaling sa kanya yung solusyon, baka malamang mas gawin niya yun, right? The more that a person will do something because he was the one who thought of it, more than if you were the one to provide him with the instructions on how to do it, okay? Rather than those that are forced upon them, it is much easier for a person to do something because it was out of his own will and it was, it was also because it came from his own idea. So that's the beauty and the magic of coaching. We as coaches, we do not get to be burdened by delegating everything to a person or directing a person to do something because it is out of the person's own will to do it because the, the thing or the, the, the thing that he wanted to, come to do actually came from him or her. All right? So that's how we would define coaching. That's how we define us coaches. You might say, so the, tit Anjo, the title of your course is Coaching is the New Normal. Well, next question then would be, what is new normal anyway? Uh, so yeah, you'd like to ask, what is new normal? Well, for many of us in the Philippines, we say that a new normal, and this is a Wikipedia definition, it is a state to which an economy, a society, a country, or a group, or an institution would settle following a crisis such as this pandemic, when this differs from a situation that prevailed prior to the start of that crisis. So when we are into a new normal, we've actually created or adapted to a change. We've gone through the change process. And while there's still some hurt, there's still some uh, uneasy feeling when we are going towards that new normal, it's all part of the process and that's part of change management. And so in the Philippines and all over the world right now, we are actually faced with the pandemic. And we know that this crisis is not going to be easily solved. While we say we have the vaccine, it's not a cure for everything. The COVID is still there. We're able to easily uh, get out and remove all our masks and face shields and, and, and party wherever we wish to. But that's part of, that's part of the new normal. In, in the technology space, in the way our leaders and you, you our co-workers and our colleagues in, in the offices, we are now faced with the challenge of using technology to the fullest. It's now virtual versus a face-to-face -face learning or versus a face-to-face -face meeting or interaction with your friends. It could also be a work from anywhere or WFA or a work from home arrangement versus in the office environment. Whereas before we are so used with coming to the office at eight o'clock, leaving at four o'clock or at five o'clock and then doing it as a routine. But nowadays, your office is your home. Like where I am right now, I'm actually in our dressing room and I am, this is my new office. And that's part of our work from home arrangement. This is the new normal. And so government would recommend what a new normal would be. It's all about reducing contacts. So for employees, it's all about working from home whenever possible. It's all about practicing physical distancing when reporting in the office, if you have to report to the office. Now for our employers, it's all about offering work from home arrangements and avoiding big meetings and mass gatherings. That's why, if you would notice, many of HR management and business solutions uh, programs have been converted into virtual as this. In fact, we have what you would call a digital learning platform. And we've had more than 40 digital platforms since the pandemic started in March uh, in early 2020. All right. And a lot of digital learning platform programs have already been facilitated not just by uh, Attorney JBJ, Sir Freddy, our pool of facilitators. <coughs> right? Okay, so this is a definition of the new normal. Challenges. So many challenges are actually being faced with right now for every one of us. First and foremost, technology or the internet of things, right? So IoT, your environment, your environment becomes that is available for you. So right now, it is possible that with my 5 Mbps subscription to PLDT, I may have some drop calls. I may have some slowdown in terms of internet usage. But in the meantime, I, I tried my very best to ensure that uh, even my colleagues, even the people in the workplace whom I coach, 
even those who are in touch with me are also able to well via this internet of things, all right? We also have to consider that while it makes virtual learning or virtual facilitation easier, it could also be very challenging when the resources are not stable or not available. Also in the Philippines, we have what you would call an IATF, which provides all the policies and all the rules, right? So IATF stands for Interagency Task Force, and they're the ones providing us with all the necessary protocols when it comes to safety as we battle this pandemic or COVID-19. So now we, we, we did not learn from the, of these words before, like GCQ, ECQ, you know, all these words such as social distancing. But because of these IATF guidelines and so on, we probably have them as like, We've memorized them, right? So a lot of these IATF rules are six, uh, six feet this social distancing and so on. In fact, if you would go to any establishment, no face mask, no face shield, no entry. Public transport, as you would see there uh, later on, they you won't be able to ride the public transport if you don't have these uh, basic necessities, right? So find out what is doable with your team members. These challenges are actually quite important to understand before one could even get into coaching. In fact, Yesterday, in Sir Freddy's presentation on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you Sir, pinakita mo yung kahapon. I, mm -hmm. I'm quite uh, happy about it because there's a new level in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's actually at the bottom part. So if you have the level five, which is the physiological needs, there's even a sixth level called internet. <laughs> so because nowadays, the new normal would already call for everything. in, the And that is why if you don't have that as a basic need, it will be very difficult to really go on with your life, isn't it, right? Part of the new challenges that we also face is what you would call your home environment. So if you notice, you now have a home office. I'm sure many of you are in your respective uh, homes. It's okay. Everyone is enjoying the, the weekend. It's a windy Saturday, actually, here in General Trias. And it, we can't help it. You have outside your home, you've got uh, your chickens crowing or the the yung, yung rooster crowing at as early as six o'clock in the morning. And sometimes there are roosters who are pasaway. You know, 10 in the morning, 11 in the morning, 12 noon. So, kung manok, ano ba naman klaseng manok yan? And then you also have a neighborhood community where dogs are aplenty. So you would have, pag may dumaan lang na pot-pot, o kaya pandesal, o pag may dumaan lang na, na nagtitinda, the dogs would start barking and it would be very difficult to stop those dogs. And funny, if you don't have a, uh, what do you call this, a, a noise can, you know, they're expensive. But the thing is, you would have to make an investment in those. And it would be difficult if you don't have the resources to begin with. So these are challenges. And COVID-19 has negatively impacted even the stress levels and the mental health of Gen Z. And not just the Gen Z, but even the parents out there, even the millennials, even our access there the parents who have children who are very rowdy. How many of you have actually seen those viral videos of uh, personalities being interviewed and then all of a sudden in their background, you would see children running in or let's say uh, cats or dogs, you know, suddenly uh, coming at you. Well, here, here in my own personal room here in my dressing room, um, Raya, my dog, she actually knows how to climb up and get to my dressing room to our area. And sometimes while I'm in the middle of a webinar, all of a sudden my dog would be beside me and, and she wants to be part of the video too. So it's actually quite funny as to how you could possibly control these things. But that's part of the challenges that we are now faced with, all right? So the coaching in the new normal for you to be able to face all those challenges. Would you agree with me on that one? These are the challenges that we are all faced with right now. What other challenges are you faced with? Could you put them in the chat box and I'd like to know what other challenges are you actually going through just to be able to get into a good engagement with your teams and with your colleagues, people that you are uh, part of in the organization? All right. So this is, I'm going to stop for now because this is just the preliminary of what coaching in the new normal is or coaching is the new normal. All right. So let me stop share and, okay. Aha. I could see that in our chat box, some people are saying that chaotic kids yelling in the background would actually be you know, part of the challenge. Power outage could also be one. In fact, sometimes you would be the host of a meeting, then all of a sudden you'd get cut off. So all your colleagues would say, 
Rasa nasiser, where is he? Diba? And that could be very challenging and and cumbersome to many. Right? Also, going to the restroom during meetings is <laughs> really quite a challenge. Now, you are required during agile meetings, you're required to switch on your camera. So it's it's uh, inevitable for you to escape and go to the toilet. But that's part of it. Managing staff would be also a challenge. Okay, Apathetic employees could also be a challenge. Yeah. And you would also be surprised that um, the slow internet connection, employees who have actually ended their contracts, employers who are, who are about to close or shut down their businesses, these are challenges that we are faced with. And it's something that we cannot... Maybe we are in control in some of them, but for the most part, we are not in control. All right? So I'll pause for a while, and I'd like to call for a break from the co from the coaching and read the twin summit that I was telling you about. Because magagamit niyo, or you will be able to make use of the twin summit to be able to appreciate how you could possibly hone yourself in human relations, hone yourself in terms of understanding compensation and benefits, and how best to serve. You don't necessarily have to be in the HR space to appreciate this Twin Summit. In fact, if I may share screen right now, let me share with you some of my, one moment please, the photos. There you go. Okay. I am sharing I with you. I go to uh, my office soon to take the fruit. Will you go to with me? No. Okay. To stay Vivo, home please. alone. Uh, may I request Vivo to please mute herself? Okay. All right. Okay, this is the this is the twin summit that we oh, are no, organizing. No. Okay, Christian, could you please uh, help us out in the audio? All right. This is the twin summit that I'm referring to you about. This is hosted by the OG Manage OG Movement of the Philippines, Asia Management and Business, and the Total Rewards Congress. The diamonds that we'll be covering would be organizational justice and total rewards. The theme for this year: We are solutions looking for new looking for problems new normal. So this is how we're going to take effect when it comes to adjusting or adapting to the new normal. We are solutions looking for problems, new normal. And first and foremost, I'd like to thank our sponsors. We have um, our partners, HR Team Asia Incorporated, Cebu General Services Inc., Temps and Staffers Incorporated, and FEU Nicanor Reyes Medical Foundation. Maraming salamat and thank you very much to our co-presenters. We would also like to thank our sponsors. We have Wall Solutions or WAHL Solutions, Forte Solutions, HR Network, PolyServe Philippines, Palscon, Royal Care Marketing Services, Life and Health Laboratory, Get Well Health, well, Get well Health Systems, Helix ERP, and a Pro DGs, right? We would also like to thank TransCycle, Man Mover Specialist Inc., Uploan and MCRI Global Corporation. And I would also like to acknowledge our donors. We have Paramount Life and General Insurance and also Ms. Kiazon for you know, taking the time to sponsor and support our Twin Summit. All right. So this is, this is our roster of sponsors. Now, the next thing that I'd like to share with you would be, okay, one moment, please, if I may just share with you. Okay. The Twin Summit will be uh, provided with a welcome address and a keynote from Vice President Lenny Robredo. He'll be providing us with a keynote message regarding this Organizational Justice and Total Rewards Twin Summit. And welcoming us is none other than Cebu Governor Gwendolyn Gwen Garcia, such a beautiful governor. And why is it that we have chosen Cebu as our host? It's because we have actually hosted in organizational justice and total rewards and a summit before in Cebu. It has been proven successful. We'd like to do it again. And Cebu has been very generous enough to uh, really provide all their services, all their talents to be able to make this Twin Summit a reality. So while we are having a Zoom virtually, Cebu is our virtual host as well. Okay, So Cebu City and the Cebu province will be providing us with a lot of their, um, with their talents to this twin summit. So it's going to be on February 4 and 5. All right. So let's take a look at the day one program for our twin summit. Day one actually talks about, if I may just zoom in a little bit, 
day one for that's February 4 talks about organizational justice again labor relations employee relations and um, industrial relations my are the chairman of HR management and business solutions and HRTA Mr. Freddy Marquez will be providing his welcome address as well and uh, including Governor Gwendolyn Garcia and the mayor of Cebu City Honorable Ricardo Labella. Also providing the opening remarks would be Ms. Salome Shaton, our the regional director for DOLE Region 7. And of course, a message coming from Ms. Lenny Robredo, our vice president. Now you might be surprised. What are the topics that will be covered here? Right? So uh, we have several uh, of our you know, luminaries, starting with Attorney Joseph Jimenez. You are probably familiar with Attorney JBJ. He'll be discussing the strategic organizational justice in a digital world. Butch Guerrero, who's the president of PALSCON, will be providing us with the value of outsourcing our jobs today. Mr. Mike Rama, the vice mayor of Cebu City, will be talking about the labor relations in the public sector. And coming from the Danish industries and uh, dialing in from Denmark, we have uh, Mr. Niels Gonsirup providing us with the value of bipartisan in labor relations. Surprise, that's just the first half of the, of the Organizational Justice Day. Because in the afternoon, we would have a tripartite forum, which will be uh, led by Attorney Benjo Santos Benavides, the Dole Undersecretary for Labor Relations. We also have Attorney Jose S. Matula, the President of the Federation of Free Workers, or FFW. You'll probably be seeing these personalities in the news, right? Chairman Edgardo Laxon of ECOP, or the Employers Confederation of the Philippines. Mainit ang ECOP right now because with all the things that have been happening in the labor front, um, you know, ECOP has been providing leave, um, the representation. So Edgar, um, Chairman Laxon will be there too. Moderating this uh, tripartite forum on Philippine labor relations would be Ms. Arlene Pinky Mante, uh, the, president, the past president of PMAP in Cebu chapter. All right. And then you'll probably be seeing two beautiful faces here. So Ms. Tina Marasigan of ABS-CBN, uh, one of the hosts of... Uh, uh, in DZMM and also of TV Patrol and, and a broadcast journalist will be uh, the, the day one and day two, of course, the, the entire ceremonies. And I'll be co-hosting with her on this organizational justice day one activity. All right. So this is for day one alone. And the investment fee is 1488 to be able to attend the two-day course. So the long arrow ito, 1000 ang ating um, investment fee. All right, so that's just for day one. Now let's take a look at day two. All right, so, okay, if I may just go back to my screen. All right, there you go. Day two is all about, let me just unscreen a little, okay. It's all about total rewards, all right? And to provide the welcome address would be uh, Ms. Loy, uh, the outgoing president of PMAP. We also have opening remarks and keynote messages coming from Ms. Beth Nasol of the President of Compensation Management Society of the Philippines, and Ms. Lynn uh, Muki, who is the Vice President of PMAP uh, for this year, all right? And then when it comes to um, total rewards, we have international panel of speakers. We begin with uh, the ATRI President or Managing Director, uh, Mr. Thomas A. Farmer, who's gonna be talking about restructuring your cash compensation for 2021. We also have Mr. Trey Davis, who will speak on executive compensation in Asia Pacific. So to my colleagues in Cambodia, in Vietnam, and Myanmar, and even in China, it will be an interesting uh, thing to note that Mr. Trey Davis of uh, Wills Towers One will be able to speak on executive compensation. Finally, uh, part of our lineup of international speakers, we have Mr. Fermin Diaz, who's one of the faculties of Singapore Management University, who would speak on reimagining re employees uh, rewards and the value of work. All right. And then finally, in the afternoon, we would have what you would call best total rewards practice in the midst of you know uh, this new normal. Okay, so we have Mr. Nick Lin, who's the uh, SVP for JG Summit Holdings. Okay, we also have Mr. JP Orbeta of Managing Director and Chief Human Resource Officer of Ayala Corporation, and my former colleague in Unilever, who's now the uh, Vice President and Chief People Officer of Coca-Cola, Mr. Drew Fernandez. Also joining uh, the lineup would be Attorney Chris Maguyala of Nestle uh, Philippines, who's the Head of, Com of Corporate Employee Relations in Nestle. And it will be moderated by our Chairman, Mr. Freddie Marquez. Right? And 
in the afternoon or as to complete that, uh, that twin summit, we'll be conferring the CTRP or the Certified Total Rewards Professionals and C or the Certified and Total Rewards Specialist that we have uh, that we have awarded to in 2020. And again, Christina Marasigan of ABS-CBN and yours truly will be hosting the second day of this Twin Summit. Whew, what a mouthful, huh? So ano pang hinihintay ninyo? What are you waiting for? Please, do not, just like what my boss had said, do not hesitate to join this seminar. And here's one thing that I would like to in, uh, to really encourage you to do right now. Huh? I'm going to stop my sharing. I want to see everyone in the room. You've heard of the Twin Summit. What are the two HR diamonds that will be covered in the HR to, in the Twin Summit? The first 10 people who would get to type it in the chat box will get a highly discounted rate of only 130 pesos to attend the summit. Huh? Type it out, type it out. There are two HR diamonds. OJ and TR, put it in as a whole, okay? Wag na abbreviate. What is the whole? The first 10 uh, participants who are able to type it out will get to join the summit at a very dis highly discounted cost of only 130 pesos. How's that? In paying 1,488 1, pesos, you only get to pay 130 pesos, all right? So the requirement would be you had the first 10 attendees to comment in our Zoom chat box will get to attend for only 130 pesos, right? So right now, our staff, sila Amy, saka sila Willie, are already validating the first 10. And Amy will provide to me the list in a few in a few minutes. So I could uh, you if you had won in our mini game today, right? So ano guys, ha? Um, if you have actually typed it and, and you're a winner, I know I would highly recommend you get it. You get that price. Kasi sayang eh. You know, the Twin Summit is actually quite a very hotly, hotly um, demanded uh, uh, webinar. And therefore, if you don't avail of it, and because even if though you're a winner, sayang, you know, you may want to transfer it to another person to transfer the, uh, the, the ticket to another person in HR in your team. And who knows, this person might be able to uh, learn something that you that he could possibly share with everyone. And though, if you want to, if you are the winner, you have to send the proof of payment to OGTR Summit 21 at gmail.com with the subject heading OGTR 2930 amount. All right. So that you'll be able to find out if you had won. All right. Okay. So right now, Amy is currently evaluating who these winners are. But in the meantime, dial excited kayo. <laughs> excited kayo. Uh, ongoing webinar and nakita kita ko yung yung dami ng tao nag-chat ano yung dami ng tao sumasagot we'll only get to choose the first 10 we'll have another game later ha huh? so just be very just be mindful of what i will announce later on all right so amy bigay mo sa akin yung listahan in a few minutes all right in the meantime why don't i proceed and return to our discussion on coaching all right if i may just Return to my slide one moment, please. Okay. My slide on the challenges. Let me refer to you to the, my next question. Why do leaders and managers need to coach? But ba natin kailangan mag-coach? Well, you may have people or employees or colleagues of yours who are at career. You may have employees who are requiring a change in their field of career. You would have some staff members who are starting their second innings in their career. You would have staff who have recently been promoted, staff who might need to learn how to handle things at the top levels. You may also have employees who need to develop and improve their skills and expertise. And maybe some senior level managers would like to just start something new. And perhaps employees are going through some stress and conflicts. And that's when we think coaching could be a good opportunity for you to explore. In other words, coaching can become a holistic way of really providing guidance, success, knowledge, learning, development, skills, experience, share support, teaching. All these, th all these things are part and uh, parcel of what you would call a coaching environment. And coaches are leaders first. Huh? In fact, um, by default, 
every team leader, basta may hinahawakan kang tao, if you have people under your wing, if you have subordinates, by default, you must learn how. In fact, leaders in the new normal, more than just leading, more than just teaching and learning the rudiments of leadership, you also have to learn how to coach. And that is why, again, what I mentioned, by default, every employee, every team leader must be a Watch out for these four E's that I am referring to. The environment that the leader must be in to be able to conduct the coaching is quite important. In the new normal, um, face-to-face would be a challenge. And therefore, the only way by which the environment could be controlled would be in a virtual space. And so we'll have, as leaders, that could be very challenging for you. But given that this is currently what we have uh, um, because of this pandemic, the has to be one of the tools that a leader would be able to manage. Okay? Another thing that a leader in the new normal should be able to manage would be the emotions of the people. We need to understand that not everyone is actually okay when it comes to handling themselves given this pandemic. Some are probably feeling anxious. Some may probably be ambivalent already. Some may already be just relaxed and okay with it. So in other words, it is about managing the emotions of your people. And therefore, leaders in, in, in the new normal should be able to somehow anticipate these types of emotions that our colleagues, our subordinates, and may have. Another thing that we need to consider, another category we need to consider is what you would call enablement. It's about allowing your people to perform, giving them the capability or the skills that they would need to, be, to enable good performance. So leaders in the new normal, it's not just about providing support, but it's also about pushing them to perform. So the thing is, how do you enable them? Is it really all about conducting coaching? You know, Bayon? The answer is, it's just part of it. But well, more than just coaching, you also need to get into regular team meetings. You also have to get into catch-up meetings. You also have to get into what you would call daily stand-ups and so on. So that's part of the new normal for a leader. And lastly, Every leader must learn how to be, how, must learn how to empathize, to be, to be demonstrating what you would call empathy, the ability to be uh, able to put himself or herself in the shoe of another person. Ang nakakatawa nga dito is that, you know, people, whenever they do coaching, tapos, um, it's, this is the funny experience, ano? Not, not personally for me, but I've heard it. He had actually been coaching a client and, um, Medyo napahiya siya na kaunti kasi nung kausap niya yung client, nasabi niya doon sa client, and he was trying to be empathic about it. Sabi niya doon sa client niya who's uh, suffering from a particular, uh, you know, an, loss of job with the family, etc. No? So sabi niya doon sa, ano, sabi niya sa kinag-coach niya, you know what, we are, I could understand you, we are on the same boat. So sabi sa kanya nung, ano, sabi sa kanya nung kinag-coach niya, how can you say that we're on the same boat? Look at your, you look at your Zoom background, you have a beautiful home, you have your internet connection that's very stable. But look at me, I cannot even switch on my camera because I don't have an I don't have a house to show you. I'm actually in the I'm actually in the restaurant in a in a fast food chain getting a free in why? Because our internet connection in the house has been cut off. So how can you say that we're in the same boat? You do not understand me. And it was an eye-opener for that coach because he didn't realize that it was so easy to say that you're in the same boat, when in fact you're not. So for a leader to be stating that, it has to be genuine. It has to be sincere. So instead of saying that you're on the same boat, you probably would want to say, I could understand where we are in right now. We're both in the same storm, but we're probably in different boats. You may be right now in a canoe. I may be paddling in a kayak, or maybe I may, I may be in a yacht. Diba? Parang pagyabang mo na, ikaw, they're okay, etc. But but the thing is, we are in the same storm, but we're not on the same boat. So it's a realization for us coaches that, you know, when you want to practice and demonstrate empathy, you also have to be sincere about it and be careful with your words. Is that okay? So those are the leaders in the new normal. And also, we, all, we need to understand that even our employees and our colleagues and our staff would have what you would call basic rights 
of subordinates. In fact, it was Louis Allen who coined this term, the basic rights of subordinates. And there are five, okay? The first one is your subordinates, your team members would like to know what you expect of them to perform. They would also like to find out if you could give them, you know, some ample space and time and opportunity to perform what you expect them to do. Another right of our employees is that they also want to find out how they are doing and the best way by which you could do so would be when you are coaching them feedback. The fourth is when your subordinates are asking this guidance. Give me the guidance and support when and where I need it. It means you don't necessarily have to provide it um, just by volunteering it, but your employees would come to you if they need guidance and support, when they want guidance and support. The employees would want to be rewarded according to their contributions. So these are the five basic rights of subordinates. So you may want to understand, am I actually providing rights to my subordinates? Think about it. Right now, let us ruminate on this, on these five basic rights you know, and, and see for yourself, to what extent would you possibly demonstrate or provide these rights to your subordinates? Do you, them, do you provide it to them with minimal extent? to an average extent or to a very great extent. Number one, do you get to communicate the work expectations to your subordinates? Number two, do you give them the opportunity to perform or do you always do or provide things for them? Number three, do you give them feedback? How often would that feedback be given if ever? Or you hardly give any feedback at all? Number four, you can support them whenever uh, they need it. And then finally, do you recognize them for their achievements? Sometimes, you know, it's so, it's so difficult to really, you know, to really um, evaluate ourselves when it comes to providing our subordinates with these rights. But then you come to understand, that's why I'm here as a I want to make sure that I give them all these rights because if I, if I curtail them these rights, then I have no right to be a leader to begin with. I cannot perform my role as a leader if I am not able to provide them with these rights. Okay? So you, siguro sabi ninyo, no, ang bigat naman pala ng role bilang isang leader, it's very heavy to be, you know, uh, the, the role of a leader is quite heavy and, and it's um, not as easy yeah, to be a leader. And that is why we are providing you with these skills. We're providing you HRM management and business solutions offers to you these tools for you to be able to really live your capability as a leader. Okay? Anjo, I have a question. How does coaching differ from mentoring? You know, when I was advertising our course, when I was advertising this, uh, this free learning session, I've had some uh, personal messages coming from the people I've invited. And they keep saying, I'm already a mentor. I don't need the coaching anymore. But I keep telling them, um, you need to understand, there's a difference between mentoring and coaching. And some of you may already know what the differences are. But for those of you who are quite new into this space, let me just give you some idea about the differences in these two, all right? So let's begin. One similarity a bit of mentoring and coaching is that they all are conversations, lots of conversations. In other words, you have the ability to have interpersonal uh, relationship. Your skills of interpersonal um, uh, communication is important as a leader and as a mentor too. Mentors would have the would have the, the capability of filling a cup for a coachee or for a subordinate, while coaching is about empty. Kasi maaring the coachee or yung taong kinu-coach mo may already have so much idea about it. But then, here you are, arriving as a coach, telling him that I would like to question some of those things that you already have in your cup. And who knows? Maybe that person might be convinced that uh, the things that he, have in his, that he would have in his cup are actually not the right ones or probably could be filled up all the more, even more, right? 
mentoring is about giving advice, primarily giving advice as a, uh, what you would call as a, tarito yung, as a subject matter expert, if I may say, you know, because usually mentors are subject matter experts in their own fields. You could be a subject matter, like Sir Freddie is a subject matter expert in total rewards. And therefore, he's mentoring a lot of his people and a lot of uh, executives as well in total rewards space. Mentoring is concentrated on giving suggestions, advising people what to do, and providing your skills and filling it up to another person. Meanwhile, a coach doesn't necessarily have to have so much mastery of a of a certain uh, what do you call this expertise that the coachee would also have. For example, um, I am a coach to a banker, but I don't necessarily have to understand fully what this banker is capable of delivering. Because for me, as a coach, I provide them with other skills, the technical skills that he's already capable of. And as we do that, we're actually asking him to question, or we're actually asking him to rethink and reevaluate some of the things that he is already familiar with. So putting it more simply, mentoring is about answering questions while coaching is about questioning the answers. You get it? Mentoring is about while coaching is about questioning the answers. So that's a big difference there. So parang, it's kind of it's kind of weird to be uh, to be questioning the answers, but that's how we are as coaches. We try to check: is that really what you want? Is that really what you're supposed to do? Do you really think that that would work? So, in other words, um, the person may probably say, "Yes, I am confident about it." That's it. I mean, you just have to trust that that coachy that you'll be able to deliver. But again it makes the coachee uncomfortable kasi parang you're trying to question his answer so that it would actually give him a second thinking and you know, papa second thought siya. And therefore, he may want to reconsider. Right? So that's the difference between a mentor and a coach. It, uh, mentoring is about capability building while coaching is more of self-discovery. Kaya nga, di ba, kine-question mo nga yung mga sagot niya. So the person discovers it for himself. Then finally, a similarity for, for both mentoring and coaching is that there ought to be support and accountability. In other words, hindi mo lang yung accountability and responsibility, hindi mo inaatas lang dun sa, sa kinag-coach mo. What you do is, you're both accountable for it. And therefore, as a coach and as a mentor, you are um, partnering with it. In fact, there's a handshake between a mentor and, his, and, the, one his, and the mentee and a coach to his coachee. All right, so that's the similarities and differences of mentors versus coaches. Right? And versus, kasi hindi ba yung dalawang yan. In fact, it could be possible that you could be a mentor and you could also be a coach. But um, I would advise that when you are wearing the mentor's hat, you just stay that, you know, in, that, in that role. And when you're wearing a coach's hat, you stay put in that coach's hat. All right? So that's, the, uh, that's how you would put it. And tanong dyan, eh, what happens if um, my employee or my subordinate would have would be faced with a lot of problems? Well, you could possibly classify it into two. It could be a behavioral problem. It could be a work performance. So when you talk about behavioral problems, you're, you're looking at tardiness. You're looking at absenteeism, improper office behavior. You could look at disobedience to company policies and rules, and even sexual misconduct. Now, for work performance-related problems, it could deal with non-attainment of expected performance output. PIPs, okay, performance improvement plans, probably require some coaching. Higher rates of rejects and waste in the, in the manufacturing space, you know, um, you're wasting a lot of resources. And even low sales, so how could you possibly address those? And then you come to realize, do I do mentoring or do I do coaching? Yan. So, minsan ang hirap, ano? It's difficult to distinguish when you're gonna get into mentoring and when you're gonna get so let's redefine it either further by introducing to you another concept called counseling naman, diba? So we all know coaching. It's a directive process by which a manager trains and orients an employee to, you know, um, helping him remove any barriers for optimum work performance. But there's another, there's another word I'd like to introduce, counseling. 
Counseling naman, like, di ba, in school, we have what you would call a guidance counselor. Well, basically, it's a support, a supportive process by which a manager would help an employee define the work through personal uh, personal problems that affect the job performance. So in other words, you're trying to uncover what is the root cause of why this particular behavior is happening and so on. So to distinguish it further, why don't we compare the two in terms of various dimensions? The one in the middle is the coaching factor, is the coaching, um, is a coaching category. And in terms of the objective, both coaching and counseling are offering help. It's a for both the coach and the coachee. But the role differs. Because for a coach, you provide and you provide the coaching, you go through a certain process. Whereas in counseling, you provide and address the content directly. During the discussion, the coach and the coachee are participating in an interpersonal discussion. It's so very participative. Whereas pagating sa the counselor is supportive. So, siyempre, inuuna, inuunawan niya muna kung ano yung naging dahilan, kung bakit nagkakaproblema yung taong ito, uh, ina-uncover niya lahat ng mga underlying reasons as to why this is happening, etc. In terms of the tone of discussion, coaching is very mature. Adult to a, to a, to a fellow adult. Whereas in counseling, it could be parent to a child. Diba? Kaya nga, I mentioned to you that coaching and counseling um, could actually be used you know, for, for a parent to be able to use it to his children, to his pamangkin, o kung sino man ang iyong uh, tinuturuan. And also, when you're in the workplace, sometimes you give a fatherly advice. You give a motherly advice to your colleagues who are younger than you. So, that's, that could be feeling. If you take a look at, let's say, the time involved during the discussion, coaching is actually quite long. Because for as long as you are the the leader of that particular team member or a subordinate, the coaching will continue. Whereas in counseling, very, very short. You know, kung tapos na yung ano, kung tapos na yung problema, kung na-address na, tapos na yung counseling. Diba? Yeah. So in other words, what we're focused more on would be on a more mature level, which is what that of coaching. In terms of elements, okay, the more... A uh, positive approach would be providing commitment, addressing the problem rather than the employee's behavior. And in terms of responsibility, the coach and the coachee are, are jointly responsible for it. And lastly, the climate is collaborative. And at the same time, the end result would be not punishment, but the result should be assistance and guidance. Yeah. So yun ang, ano, yun ang, yun ang nakikita nating malaking pagkakaiba ng coaching sa counseling. Right? So to summarize it, then I'll pause for a while. I think it's all about personal and professional development, focusing on the present and guiding towards a desired outcome. Consulting is about identified professional change. Okay, so you become a consultant to something wherein your, your advice is converted either as a thing to work on or possibly advice na. So pwedeng nilang kunin, pwedeng hindi. Mentoring is also for professional development, but it's focused on succession it's focused on training another individual to do what a mentor is capable of. And then finally, counseling or therapy is all about personal unresolved issues such as um, trauma, uh, could be a behavioral issue, uh, emotional uh, imbalance, etc. Right. So yan ang So ngayon, ang tanong natin is, eh, Anjo, what do I do now? Am I a coach? Am I, am I a mentor? Am I a counselor? Am I a therapist? Ba? Depend sa iyo. How would you want to address it? Yeah. For me, I would recommend, since you're here in my coaching session, ha, get into coaching. Because I tell you, you would get to apply coaching in a bar of you know, a many number of ways. All right? So that's it for now. Let me just stop share. And let's see if there are some uh, questions or some feedback coming from our colleagues here. So I could see that some of them are saying let them also perform what they can do in their capacity but will guide them accordingly. That is so true. Important for you to be able to uh, stay in the background and let your people do the performance themselves kasi pag nagka-problema naman sila, lalapit naman sa iyan eh. Unless of course you're the kind of leader who's very autocratic or the kind of leader who's very ang tawag din, parang MM, micromanager. Ah, have you heard people who are micromanagers? Or are you a micromanager yourself? 
those are those are things that we want to avoid, di ba? The manager could be someone na parang nandun na sa likod mo, parang kulang na lang siya na lang mag-press ng enter para sa iyo habang nagta-type ka. Ganun ganun ka kadetalyado at saka mga uh, na, sorry ah, nakakainis or sometimes it could be a little bit uh ano ba nakakainis sa English. Tulungan niyo nga ako. <laughs> nakakainis for for someone to be always being disturbed by a micromanager. One uh, one participant said a coach must also be able to ask the right question. I agree with you. You know, you should be able to frame the right questions. That is why a coach should be able to really get to learn to ask the right questions. Meron tayong tinatawag na open questions, meron din mga tinatawag na questions. Now you might say, eh, eh, Anjo, I am not a team leader. And more often, I am the coachy. Do I have the ability to, or do I also have the right to ask questions for the coach? The answer is yes. Because not all the time, it will be the coach who will be asked. And then you'll have to respond. Sometimes you could also ask questions from the coach so that you could also ask him, if you were in my shoes, if, or if you were in my situation, how would you do it? So that at least you are able to somehow also uh, pick the brains of your coach so that he can possibly give you advice. So my advice to our coaches or to those who are being coached, also to this habit of asking questions from your coach so that, you know, it will be a, a two-way thing. It's not just a one-way thing where the coach is always the one asking questions. Right. The coaching agenda is co-created by the coach and the coachee. I agree with you there, Mary Rose. And while mentoring agenda is set by the mentee. That is so true. I agree because the outcome from a coaching agreement is unmeasurable, while the outcome from a mentoring relationship can shift and change over time. That is so true. Yeah. So I've seen, I've been seeing a lot of questions, but later we will address some of those questions. All right. So while you're formulating those questions, let me just pause for a while and announce the 10 winners. And Amy has actually given me the list. All right. So just copy paste here, copy. Okay, gentlemen and ladies, let's take a look at your Zoom, your chat box. And let me just announce to you that here are the winners. There you go. Okay. The winners of those who would be able to join our Twin Summit for a very low cost of only 130 pesos. Sorry, 130 pesos. Gina Montealto, Florelie Estillore, Pinky Mante, Cheryl Ulan, Jihan Dinong, Daniel Baterna, Carla Mabugay, Mine Henosa, Shena May Rio Frio, Renin, Renin, could you please provide your surname? Jessica Acosta, Midler Rojas, Paul Gerard Tamamao, Joseph and Ria Galindo of Shana. So if you notice, sabi ko sampu lang. But, ginawa ko ng 15. I made it 15. Because sometimes there will be some of you who would not be able to attend or would forego attendance to the summit. And so I made a buffer of five more. So, out of the 10, we have five more. So those who are on the list, all you have to do is just send it to Gcash. I uh, late the number and provide us with your payment. And then Amy, my, my colleague in HR MBSI, will provide you with the coordination. And you'll have to email your, what do you call this? You have to email your uh, proof of payment to be able to really get confirmed that you have uh, paid and you'll be able to join the Twin Summit. All right, so congratulations. Okay. So, yan ito. Ayan. So, thank you. Ayan. So, Renin, his last name is Lag, uh, Lagrio. Is it a she or a he, Renin? I don't know, but thank you for, uh, for joining. In. I'll announce another game in a little while. But for now, no questions. Why don't we go back to our discussion? Okay. Uh, Anjo, can you can you please help me? But I know that coaching is used more often for poor performers. So why are you suddenly promoting coaching? Kasi kami sa kumpanya namin, we're used to having coaching when a person is not performing quite well. But all of a sudden, you come to realize, pinopromote ni Anjo na coaching, pwede pala sa kahit sino. So would you agree with me on that one? Well, my friend, Rules of the games have changed. But just yesterday, very recently, because back in the old days, we usually use coaching like as if a coach would in a sports coach, diba in a sports coaching. So pag halimbawa, mahina ang isang player, 
kino coach mo para matuto siya. So limbawa sa tennis, if you're just beginning or starting out with your with your with your tennis as a sport, a coach will be there to guide you. When you are in your fitness regimen, a coach will be there to always make you improve your performance. So normally, a separate chapter is provided. Like for example, in this illustration, chapter coaching to improve poor performance. Because chances are, we make use of coaching from a team leader to his subordinate to really improve on his on this on his first on his or her performance. Then you come to realize that the rules of the game have changed. In instead of just coaching a person to improve a poor performance, we now coach your colleagues for high performance. Diba? So, maganda na good performer na siya eh, but you just need to up the ante by really making sure that this person continuously improves on the way he does his work. Okay, so let's try to identify what are these types of coaching and how can I possibly apply it, all right? So there's the first type of coaching wherein you coach for individual change. The focus here normally is on skills development. It's all about providing support and performance feedback to the person who's, who's starting out on, his, uh, on this change on the thing that he's performing, okay? So it could be very content-specific. It could be on academics, halimbawa, nahihirapan sa certain subject and you know naman that this person can actually deliver. It's just that it's not off to a good start the person so that it's, it's he is motivated to perform well. It could also be a behavioral change that you would want to improve on the individual. Another type of coaching is about coaching for group or team change. So ito, we are, many of us would be in agile teams, you know, um, uh, packed into less than nine, uh, six to nine uh, team members and usually there, there's a lot of collaboration. So you coach to be able to collaborate and facilitate group dynamics. And then there's also what you would call a systems change, wherein you focus on what you would call an organizational change. So, Limbawa, there's been, for example, in the new normal, ang daming, ang daming na for low, ang daming na redundate, ang daming na wala ng trabaho. So, nagkakaroon ng um, new work is assigned to you. Or there's been a job reduction. So, therefore, the, the job previously being handled by that person is turned over to you. So, you are coaching because of that system change that is happening. So these are the three major categories or types of coaching. Um, also, redefine it differently. If you'd see here, there could be what you would call performance coaching. There could be what you would call a sports coaching, which is, of course, the most normal type of coaching that you would see. It could also be a life coach. So a life coach, is, um, limbawa, yung ninong mo sa kasal, Yung iyong, yung iyong uh, tita, yung iyong tata, yung iyong uh, kasamaan sa trabaho, they could also be providing you with life coaching. Very formal, but they give you advice. They could give you, um, they could, could, you could consult with them, and that's part of life coaching. You could get into what you would call business coaching. Let's say you're, you're um, trying to hit a certain target, let's say for profitability, you get into business coaches, right? Executive coaching. Let's say you have a CEO, who wants to regularly get toned about the link and how he could possibly uh, have more uh, engagement with his staff or empathy, get into executive coaching. You also have what you would call transitional coaching, wherein a person would move from one role to another. Ay, life coaching ko. And there would also be what you would call transformational coaching, wherein a person would be transitioning from one, one paradigm to another, from one new normal, an old normal to another. Or halimbawa, um, a new paradigm na mataya ng asawa. Or let's say, dating individual contributor, ginawa mong uh, department manager. All of a sudden, handling so many people. So that's a transformation for the person. Or let's just say, uh, it could also be, uh, in, let's say for example, and, and this, uh, don't laugh, uh, in the LGBT community. Let's say halimbawa, the person is a transgender and has to, decided to live the life of, uh, of a female. From, from a male, from a male uh, psyche, gusto niya na maging babae. So meron siyang transformational coaching. And the LGBT community also provides that kind of coaching to those who are new in this, um, in this uh, psyche. In fact, um, based on my research, there's a growing community of LGBT coaches. But in what they do is, um, and, and this is something that's really happening in the real world. You know? We would have uh, 
transgenders or, or let's say gay community and they would want to have uh, breast implantations or they would want their, their appendages removed. For example, yung lalaki, gusto niya maging babae, so magpapatanggal siya ng kanyang uh, sexual organ. And then there are coaches, who would, LGBT coaches, who would actually help these people think about it more thoroughly. Do you really want to have it removed? Do you really want to have it um, added in your, in your appendages, etc.? These are what you would call transformational coaching. And I tell you, it's not easy. Because sometimes the, right, the, the wrong framing of questions can actually lead to wrong answers and at the same time could lead to wrong decisions. So you need to be very careful about the framing of your questions. Um, those who are committing suicide, when you do coaching, um, those who have, uh, uh, what do you call this, um, hinted on committing suicide, Sometimes hindi coaching ang ginagamit dito eh. You have to be get into the, the root cause as to why it's happening. So coaches would have to ask why to be able to get the root cause. In fact, sabi nga, may nakakatawang sinabi before na, why ng why hanggang umaray? Yeah, because you have to get into the root cause of it. So you keep asking why this is happening. Why do you think this will work? Why do you think it is happening? So why ng why hanggang umaray? Yeah, so for coaches like us, we need to keep, finding out what the root cause is, okay? So those are the different types of coaches and much more. But how may I possibly begin to coach if I am just on my, on my start into really getting into coaching as a new normal? Well, friends, colleagues in this room right now, I tell you, it all starts with fostering trust. Kasi you would have a difficulty engaging with another individual either virtually or face-to-face -face or interacting with the person if there's no trust to be Bakit kita kakausapin? Why am I, why am I gonna, you know, there's a coachee, why am I gonna share this with you? I don't even trust you. When we are in the workplace, you don't, we don't even talk. So it's important for you to foster that trust and be able to um, plant it early on in your coaching uh, relationship with that individual. It's also about to establish rapport. Okay, or good friendship with the person. Rapport is it's not just a, it's not just about um, chami chami or friendship, ano? But rapport is really going deeper and and trying to uncover the employee's behaviors, understanding what what his favorites are, what his uh, pet peeves are, being able to see what works well with that person, and, so, and also understanding the scenario or the situation that the person is in right now. And the third part is about building relationships. You'd be able to get trust and rapport. It's not easy, but you would need those first two to be able to establish the good relationship that you would so require in a coaching environment. And to be able to do that, what you would call the key principles for coaching. And I'll end here, no? the three key principles, because this is quite important for us. Whether you're new in coaching or let's say you are a veteran in coaching, these key principles are always in the works, okay? The first one is about maintaining or enhancing a person's self-esteem. So you have, a, you have a subordinate, you have a coachee, and you want to start that person. The thing you have to do is to enhance the person's self-esteem is he feels down. So right now in the pandemic, alam naman natin na marami sa mga kasamahan natin na nahihirapan. So you want to somehow the person's self-esteem by being sincere in a compliment, let's say providing the person, oh, you look good today. Pero wag naman yung parang plastika na parang sabi mo, you look good today, pero yung tao eh, shiveled yung hair o kaya eh, mukhang parang hindi pa naghihilamos. So you have to be very sincere in your compliment. If, oh, you have a good uh, background that you've chosen today. Is that, is, that, uh, is that your living room? Your living room looks good, etc. So you're complimenting the person and you're enhancing the person's self-esteem in that particular manner. Maintaining or enhancing a self-esteem is all about promoting open communication. It's also about promoting mutual respect. It minimizes defense ng ano ng coach mo. And it improves the relationship as you continue working on enhancing or maintaining a person's self-esteem. The technique there is to be very sincere and specific with your compliment. So pag kinompliment mo talaga yung tao, huwag mo namang sabihin na, wow, that's a very nice attitude. Uh, excuse me, what attitude are you referring to? So you have to be very specific about it. It's, the technique is also about appreciating your subordinate or appreciating your coachee. 
Okay, so let's talk about being specific. Well, when you want to focus on the behavior of the employee, you don't just say you're absent-minded. You just you 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 may possibly have that in mind, you know, that you know, ito, kaya ako gusto i-coach ng tao to kasi absent-minded siya. But what are one or two scenarios that I could possibly recall that makes me say he is absent-minded? So you have to drill down further and state to the person. You know, um, Charlie, there have been two episodes where I noticed that you have been a miss with uh, remembering what the tasks involved are for you. In the first instance, last Monday, I asked if you already had finished the task and you said you forgot. Also, in our second uh, team meeting, you said that you were because you prioritized other things, only to find out that you mentioned to your colleague that you forgot about it. So, ganon, you've been very specific about it. So, instead of just saying you're absent minded, you cite specific reasons as to why you think the person is absent minded. Also, you can't say to a person, you are hard-headed or matigas ang ulo mo. Paano mo nasabi? What makes you say that I am hard-headed? Or let's say, kanina nga sabi ko, that, that was a good attitude to have. What attitude do you do? And, and what specific behavior are you citing? Et cetera. Right? So that's the first key principle. Maintain or enhance a person's self-esteem. Ano naman yung maintaining? Pang colleague na, alam mo yung misan, ang taas ng ego, parang masyadong mayabang and so and so full of himself so sometimes you get to see mayabang naman taas ng ego nito so what you do is to be able to bring that or prick that ballooning ego you may have to bring the person down and say you know what you're very good in IT and I appreciate that in fact last week solved the IT concerns that we had I appreciate what you have done congratulations yun lang in other words maintain mo yung self-esteem ng tao hindi mo pwedeng, hindi mo, wag mo nalang sabihin na, ang galing-galing mo, alam mo, next time, ikaw na talaga ang the best. Ikaw na, wag mo nang ganun. Kasi the more that you are, yun, na, pinag, na, na, nagyayabang yung tao, pag mas nakakarangin siya ng mga ganun. So just maintain the person's self-esteem. Alright? Well, no, but you know, that's the reality of things. And it really happens in, in many different ways. The second key principle is that of being able to listen and respond with empathy. The technique here, is to be able to really look at the person in the eye in a in a virtual capacity when you are doing a, a coaching with your team member kung kaya buksan yung kanyang camera at nakikipag-usap sa iyo please do so so that you could see the person's reactions you could see the facial expression and then you'll be able to listen with the person's um, emotions and try to label what he's feeling you could say that you're feeling uneasy about it o pa nakasmile, you're happy about it. O limbawa, naka-frown. So you could possibly say, I could sense that you are not understanding what we are discussing here because I could see you're frowning. So yung mga ganun, you could validate whether you're, what you are um, what you are sensing is actually correct or not. All right? So it's about labeling the emotion, rephrasing the content, and reflecting the feeling and searching for understanding. In other words, it's about empathy. And with empathy, it encourages cooperation. It enhances, again, the self-esteem of the person because you know that you put focus on the person. You're not just actively listening, but in fact, you are empathically listening to that individual. And what happens is, if you're empathically listening to the individual, it opens up the world to facilitative discussion and it opens exchange between the coach and the coachee. All right? Lastly, The third principle talks about developing and seeking ideas and solutions together. In other words, ito yung pagkakataon where you now try to help each other out in terms of trying to understand what solutions we can possibly come up with to be able to solve that concern. You can ask questions, particularly open questions, so that it facilitates the discussion. Ito yung binagit ko nga sa inyo na it's about questioning the answer too. So, limbawa, sinabi ng isang coach mo na I think um, solution A will work. And then you could possibly question, why do you think solution A will work? And then the person will, will explain. So how else do you think solution A will work? So it enhances the discussion. It pinipigamo ikanga yung coach mo. You actually try to uh, ring out all the things that you could possibly come up with to be able to really validate why solution A And then in, item number, in key principle number three, As a coach, you demonstrate your support and telling the person that I am confident that you could possibly do this. 
I'm confident that you will be able to work on this particular solution because of what you've told me a while ago. It solicits involvement. It achieves commitment from the individual being coached and it improves the collaboration between you and the coach. Yeah, so those are the key, three key principles for coaching. And the reason why I said I'm going to stop here is because when you want to get into full coaching, HR Management Solutions offers what you would call a coaching for excellence seminar. We teach you what you would call a facilitative coaching discussion. We have a standard uh, material we call a GROW model. And in the GROW model, it's facilitative yung ano mo, yung from, from the goal to the reality to the options and to the will and way forward. With that GROW model, you're able to facilitate a very fruitful coaching scenario. So if you want to sign up for our coaching seminars, please do so. We'll, we'll provide it to you in February and in the rest of the coming months um, as HR Management and Business Solutions offers to you a calendar of activities. All right, so let me stop there and see if there are any questions or feedback coming from our participants. So let me just uh, review and rewind uh, my chat here. Okay. One participant said, coaching is sometimes keeping right people on track. That is so true. Diba? Sometimes the people on track, you just want to speed them up. Kumbaga parang LRT lang yan eh. Na dati rati yung, yung train mo, tumatabo ng 60 kilometers per hour. Pero dahil sa mga medyo nakakalawang, kulang sa maintenance, kulang sa uh, prevention, uh, preventive maintenance, pumabagal. So when you're there as a coach, pinapambilis mo ulit. So it's keeping your people on the right track to work faster. Okay? Yeah, okay. So there are a lot of questions that I'll read through later on together with Willie. But are you ready for another game? I'm going to give you another discounted rate. Really, Willie, could you please flash on screen uh, the mechanics for the second for the second game, please? Oh, yeah, get ready with your keyboards because I'm going to. Yeah, there you go. Uh, number, bullet number two, okay? The next 10 attendees to write down the correct answer to my question will also get, ah, this time, from 130 pesos, a major increase ng kaunti, ha, pero discounted pa rin, ha, 330 pesos na lang yung rate ngayon. So from 1,488, it's now down, uh, it's now down to 330 pesos, okay? Discounted pa rin yun, so um, grab that chance, okay? So now, here is the question. Wala pa. Okay. Ang tanong. <laughs> there are two important personalities on day one who will provide the keynote address and the welcome address. She is the, the second in command in the country and the second is the governor. Write down their names now. Okay. Who are these two personalities who will provide the welcome address and the keynote? Type it in the chat box. Let's take a look. The first 10. All right. The first 10. Sir Fedi, sagot nila. And the correct answer, as many of you had, uh, had written there, we have Vice President Lenny Robredo and Cebu Governor, the beautiful Gwendolyn Garcia. Yeah. So could you please count it and let us know which ones have uh, won the opportunity to join the Twin Summit for only 330 pesos, all right? So sa ngayon, Amy has just, uh, is now counting the first 10. And of course, we'll be 15 pa tayo dyan later on, ha? But if, for example, you are unable to win this, uh, this particular game today, bibigyan ko pa kayo ng 56% discount. Willie, could you please flash the next uh, slide? It is called 650 pesos within 65 hours, all right? It's very, it's very simple. Because right now, as you would see, the Twin Summit would cost 1,488. But I'm going to slap. What we'll do is I'm going to offer you the opportunity to join the Twin Summit for only 650 pesos. That's right. All our participants in this room who are not winners of our two games earlier would get to join the Twin Summit for only 650 pesos, all right? If you would... Join us or pay up or register from now all the way until February 1, 2021. So that's Friday, that's on Monday at 5 p.m. Okay. Yung 65 hours actually nagsimula kahapon kasi nag-game kami kahapon. 
and that's where we started the 65 uh, 65 hours. So it's 650 pesos. Registration rate will be given to the first 30 attendees. Pero kung limbawa, lumampas ka na sa 30 and you still have, you know, uh, willing to pay 650, papayagan ko kayo. Basta pumasok ka within the first 65 hours or up to February 1, 5 o'clock p.m. Kasi guys, unfortunately, after 5 p.m. of February 1, we'll stop the, the promo and it will be back on the regular rate of 1,488. All right? If you're able to provide your, uh, uh, your payment, you can actually make use of any of these. DDO, savings account, you would find it in our, you uh, know, paki screen, paki, uh, or save it in your screen, you know, screen capture. You have a BDO savings account under the name HR Management and Business Solutions. You also have a BPI savings account under the name HR Management and Business Solutions. And you also have our GCash under the name of Federico R. Marquez Jr. The GCash account is 0917-126-3889. Right. So, ano pang iniintay ninyo? Ha? Kung hindi man ikaw HR practitioner, but kung hindi man ikaw HR practitioner, but would like to avail of this twin summit, it's transferable. In other words, you can forward to them your winning or your discounted rate. So, you can transfer it to individuals whom you think will be able to benefit from this twin summit. Pero I think you would be able to benefit from this twin summit. Plus, of course, you get to see Kita yung mga personalities would be able to attend, to join us and to be able to uh, provide their expertise. All right? So, tinan ko yung aking chat box. If, um, ah, wala pa si, ano, wala pa si Amy na listahan. But in the meantime, Miss Willie you could you please help me with Q&A? Willie is my colleague in HR Management and Business Solutions and together we promote HR MBSI's Twin Summit. Hi, Willie. Hi, sir. Good morning. Well, I'm background mo, ah. Sige nga, really, what are some of the questions that they may have? And I'll okay. try my best to ask them. Okay, I <coughs> have in cap, um, three questions. The first question is... And then, nabasa mo na to, sir. Ito galing kay, ano, kay Miss Ria Galindo of Siana. Sir, okay. Anjo, how do you think should we address individuals at work who has the skill but loses the will to perform at times? Ah, okay. Alam nyo, uh, alam mo, Ria, and also to everyone else who may be interested in this particular question. Sometimes it's all about will versus skill. Ano? The person may already be very skillful with, with this particular role, pero yung will bumababa. So, ang nangyayari dyan, baka minsan, uh, you may just need to provide a supporting function or a supporting role. Sometimes, if you think that the willingness naman is still there, but hindi naman talaga so, siguro na demotivating or maybe is just undergoing a personal crisis, then you may just want to uncover first the reason behind it. If the person feels like um, na-uncover niya na, na-bring na out into the open na yon, usually, ano lang yan eh, uh, dyan nagsisimula, pag na-uncover na nung taong yon, it, it, it indicates that he is ready to share. And you as a coach, you're ready. So the, as soon as you are un, you are un, you are able to, to uncover what these personal crisis are or what is actually hindering the person to perform na wala yung willingness then you can get into coaching you can start formulating your questions such as for example what kind of what kind of support coming from your team members and, and from my end do you think will help you get back in the game if the person says Wala lang, parang tinatambal lang talaga ako. You could, you could possibly say, um, do you have any idea, some ideas as to how some of your team members can support you? What kind of um, technical support would you like them to provide you with? Um, would you like them to help you out in some of your tasks while you are helping, uh, while you are trying to solve this personal crisis and so on? In other words, start supporting the person in any which way you can, but not totally removing the responsibility from that person. Because in the end, responsibility pa rin ng tao yun. It's just that right now, medyo nalulunod lang siguro siya. Willingness to perform, medyo. Kasi skillful naman eh. It's just that yung skill, yung kanyang willingness, bumababa lang talaga. Kasi nga, medyo na undergoing sa crisis yung tao yun. Alright? So yun lang. 
Okay, another question coming from Paul Gerard to Mama to Mama. Sir, can I ask lang how to coach facing family and work problem right now? Right now in this pandemic, um, many of us would have these personal crises where people have lost their jobs. We would have family members who are once uh, breadwinners. All of a sudden, they are in a crisis because they are unable to pay. They're unable to pay for their Beralco. You see this in the news, diba? Really, you see in the news there were um, before this family would have uh, a breadwinner able to provide everything for the family, and then all of a sudden, uh, because of the pandemic, na wala na trabaho. Eh, meron sila mga electric bills to yung isang adon electric bill niya umabot ng forty one thousand. How can you possibly pay for that bill? So, alam ba naman sa coach? Sabi mo na. Uh, gusto mo mangutang para eh, huwag mong gagawin yun kasi unang-una ayaw naman natin magpautang di ba? because we also have our own struggles in finances but what you can possibly do is ask the person what possible uh, can, can you kindly enumerate for me what are some of the interference or what are the difficulties or challenges that you're undergoing through right now I may not be able to help you out in all those but if you're able to unload to me what those challenges are, then maybe we could pinpoint some of those and we can actually focus on the things that we think could be addressed from my end, from your end, and also from our colleagues' end. Because at the end of the day, it's a joint between you and the, uh, and the coachee. Wag mo nga lang panghihimasukan kapag family matters na. Halimbawa, away mag-asawa. I think as a coach, you may not want to do that because you want to maintain the professionalism between you and the coachee. So, kung halimbawa, magsimula ka na magbigay ng advice as a family man, um, as to what, you, what he should do to be able to um, para magbumalik sa business niya, etc. You're threading on a very thin line. So, be very careful. If you're, if you're, kung sanay ka doon, if you're used to doing it, why not? Offer your advice as a marriage counselor. Pero as a counselor, not as a marriage coach, di ba? As a counselor. So, in other words, Use it like a parent to a child or use it like a ninong to an inaanak. Ganun na magiging advice mo. So kailangan eh, maging maingat tayo. Especially since some family problems could be very, 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 very personal. Okay, sir. Sir, meron lang pong um, uh, comment lang din si Sir Joel de Guzman. I totally agree on coaching strategy in industrial setting. So in that setting daw, yung coaching daw talaga is mag apply And then the, the um, other question coming from Mirna Desena from Caritas, kailangan ba psychology graduate ka para maging coach? Meron bang qualification? Well, to become a coach, it doesn't matter what your, what your educational background is. The more important thing is you have a certain set of, you have acquired a certain set of skills to be able to become a good coach, you know? And coaching naman as a profession, dumadaan tayo sa training. But some of the skills that you may want to acquire would be what you would call interpersonal communication skills. Kailangan kasi, di ba remember, coaching and mentoring are all about communication and conversation. So you need to be very adept when it comes to facilitation ng discussion. Hindi kasi pwede magkaroon ng dead air eh. You know, as a coach, parang magiging medyo panghihinalaan ng iyo kapag mahili ka sa dead air. I mean, you know what dead air is? Yung bang parang you're having a conversation all of a sudden, wala kang masabi. Alam mo yun, parang, parang, nag, parang namatay yung internet mo. So, facilitative dapat. So, one of the highly regarded interpersonal communication skills. Another would be the ability or the skill of empathy. Active listening. Because a coach should be able to summarize what the discussion points had been. A coach should be able to really have uh, have a keen ear to be able to hear out what the person had just said so that kaya mong ulitin. Pag kaya mong ulitin, napakinggan mo na gusto yung tao. So, one of those skills should be what you would call active listening skills and more importantly, empathic listening skills. The ability to ask and frame the right questions. That's also a skill. Kasi marami sa ating bilang mga uh, coaches, Tanong lang tayo ng tanong, thinking that the question is proper because it is of the guidelines, etc. But sometimes, even the questions that are listed there in our guidelines may not be appropriate. So, a coach should have a keen way of filtering 
what would be the appropriate questions to ask? Should I ask an open question that would begin with why, what, how, etc.? Or should I just ask a yes or no question? So those are some of the skills that we would know. And then, of course, to also have the ability to really read out a person's um, behavior. So kailangan talaga, usually, um, ang mga psychology graduates, magaling siya, syempre, because it's study of human behavior. But again, you don't have to be a psychology graduate to be able to be a coach. Because remember, every team leader, every individual who's, who has people should have the coach. Thank you, sir. Another question coming from David. Sir, parang karugtong to eh. Uh, how do we know if we are qualified to coach? Is it the experience, training? How do we also measure our effectiveness? Would it be qualitative or is there a quantitative measurement of your effectiveness as a leader? All right. So there are many institutions that we offer coaching, you know, coaching as a profession. So you probably heard of ICF, the International uh, Coaching Federation. They certify people to become coaches. At the same time, it could also be like from my end, I was certified by two institutions. The first one was by Interaction Associates, which is based in the United States. And the second one is Executive Coaching by the Asian Institute of Management under the Banyan Tree Coaching Program. So this is done through training. And it is also by experience because in my role as an HR practitioner, uh, people come to me to request for coaching. Even CEO in ANZ in my previous organization, I've had two, ex uh, two CEOs who, who came to me and approached me and requested for coaching. And we did that. We also had one from Global Mobility wherein uh, we were able to solve certain, uh, certain concerns. And that's really based on experience. Now, if you were to check, what are some of the measures if you are able to really provide good coaching? Take a look at these three. One is, alimbawa, kinu-coach mo isang tao. Tapos kaya siya sinabihan ng manager niya na dapat siyang i-coach is because yung performance rating is suffering. So one good way by which you could see coaching effectiveness is when the performance rating of that person improves the following year or improves in the following quarter. Or if there's a remarkable improvement, let's say, in terms of behaves. Diba? So, limbawa, kung dati -dati, the person is so meek, if the person does not want to engage with other people, and all of a sudden, he becomes uh, he becomes very engaging. The person starts approaching you, becomes very approachable. The person starts speaking up. Then that could be a measure of the effectiveness of coaching. Another way of measuring coaching effectiveness is what you would call feedback. The doesn't necessarily have to come from the coach, but the feedback could come from a third party. For example, a colleague. Si Kochi, meron siyang kasamahan o katabi sa, katabi sa mesa, katabi sa, sa workplace. Or in the virtual world, hindi mo siya katabi. But the thing is, you work together. So you could possibly contact that individual and ask the individual, um, may I ask if you had seen any changes with this particular employee A? Because we are doing coaching right now and I'd like, and we've been doing it over the last two months, three months. And I'd like to know if you would be observing any particular change? What feedback can you give? So that's a way of measuring effectiveness. And then lastly, um, satisfaction rating. Is the person who has through your coaching uh, coaching program satisfied with the way things are going? Kasi misa malalaman mo, kasi nai-enjoy nung tao. He appreciates going to a coaching session each time. Pero the moment you see that nag-schedule ka na coaching, it's scheduled on Tuesday. Tapos the person would say, I am sorry, but I won't be able to make it on Tuesday. Can you do it on Thursday? Alam mo, makahalata ka. Pag nagsimula na mag-beg mag off yung tao na mag-coaching, na mag it, could, it could indicate that the person does not like to be coached. And so you'll have to find ways to be able to really check how you could possibly improve the satisfaction rating of that particular person being coached. And then finally, employee engagement. If the person being coached is, talks, is about, um, yung nga, will, medyo yes, di ba? Then, kung tumas yung willingness niya, then employee engagement also improves. Then, you could say that employee that the coaching is being effective. Okay? So, those five. Thank you, sir. Sir, ano, pagsasama-samahin ko na lang yung question ng tatlo dito na participants natin. Galing kay Shena May Ropio, Carlene Alcazar, and David John Reyes. The question is, how to coach someone who is older than the coach? Are there difference in coaching process in multi-generation? Uh, then, David, how would we erase the thinking po na mas matanda ako sa'yo kaya mas tama ako <laughs> when you coach an older colleague? Yan po yung question. Hmm. Ahem. Okay. 
alam nyo, sa coaching, hindi na dadaan sa edad yan. <laughs> sa panahon ngayon, Miss Willie, no, mas marami nga ngayon ang mga coach bata na tinuturo na matatanda. For example, in technology space, syempre yung mga Generation X, although we know how to make use of technology, who teaches us these things? The younger generation. So, tayong mga matatanda, uh, sorry ah, kaming mga matatanda, I'm in my 40, I'm, I'm nearing 50 already, di ba? So, the thing is, we we need to acknowledge this. We have the certain level of maturity for ourselves that there are some things in our lives that we are not capable of delivering. And we should be humble enough. Yung ego natin, no? ang nakakatawa dyan, eh? ego is the biggest enemy of coaching and mentoring. Why? Because you, you sometimes, and I'm not saying all those uh, uh, medyo elderly, ano? sometimes yung ego nga, nasasabi, mas matanda ako, kaya mas marami akong alam sa'yo. The biggest enemy of coaching is ego. So if the younger generation pag tinuturuan natin or pag kina-coach natin ang isang medyo mas nakakatanda sa atin, huwag tayong maasar sa kanilang mga pahaging na mas matanda na, ay, nagawa ko na yan, etc. You can possibly say, alam mo, sir, I, I trust your wisdom. I actually uh, acknowledge that wisdom. I'd like to share with you uh, some new methodologies that we are doing currently. Would you be willing to listen? Ayan. So in other words, ano ka, pasensyoso ka pa rin. Hindi mo pwede sabihin na, alam mo sir, maganda yung wisdom mo eh. Pero mas may nagusto, meron mas may bago. Huwag mo namang sabihin ganun kasi parang lumalabas, may ego ka din, magyayabang ka din. So, anong nangyayari? One coach to a coach, eh, nagpapa, nag, nagpapa, eh. di ba? So kailangan eh, to a young coach, coaching an elderly person, you may have to exercise some patience, you may also have to exercise some humility from your end, acknowledge the elderly person's uh, wisdom and capabilities and at the same time hindi bata and at the same time offering what you think you could possibly provide new on the table Ayan. so yung okay ma okay matakot pag nagco-coach kayo na medyo mas nakakatanda kasi sa totoo lang pinapasikatan lang kayo noon kasi syempre sinisinda ka pero ang importante diyan pakita mo na meron ka ring kaalaman thank you sir so ito pong question galing kay Miss Bebet how will you coach an employee who has a behavioral problem, always late, and who has a performance problem? <laughs> Sir, mom, work from home na, may late pa rin. He has to be reminded always about his works. He promised to improve but would always go back to this problem. What will be the next step? Ito na nga na late pa. Yun na nga, sir, eh, di ba? Parang, eh, you in the new normal, uh, late palagi, tardiness is always, uh, you know, this person is, in other words, systemic na sa kanya yun. So, you know, um, I may have to address it differently. Kasi you also have to find out. Hindi mo pwede sabihin na, alam mo, lagi kang late. Kailangan, meron kang substantiated facts. Tell the, you try to monitor the number of times the person has been late. So, alimbawa, the meeting is at 10 a.m. Pero he logged in at 10.11. So, you could possibly put in your notebook, ah, Willie logged in on Monday at 10.40, at 10.15, which is 15 minutes late. On Tuesday, in the next team meeting, the person log in at 10.25. Meron ka ng listahan ng mga, ano niya, ng kanyang mga links. And during your discussion, yun ang pinag-usapan ninyo. Sabihin mo na, I have been observing you in the last couple of weeks and I found out that in four out of our five team meetings, you have been late on Monday when you came in at 10.15. You've been late on Tuesday where you log in at 1025 and so on and so forth. Tingnan natin kung may sagot pa siya. Tapos doon na magsisimula ngayon, may I find out what is causing you to log in late? O di syempre, magbibigay na mga alibis yan. As soon as one alibi after another is given, the next step to ask would be, may I know what do you have in mind to be able to minimize these alibis? Magbibigay siya ng suggestion. So, yung mga suggestions sa'yo, minsan, alam naman niya magagawa niya. So, you could say, if suggestion A would work, how do you think you could demonstrate to me that it will be useful for you? How do you think it will work? What is your measure of success? So, anong nangyayari, pinipigal to, to commit himself to delivering to that suggestion. So, really, it's a process. So, kumbaga eh, ang importante lang dyan, you have to have the right facts to support your claims. Pero kung sabihin mo na, alam mo, na-observe ko na lagi kang late. Siyempre, the person could say, we, ako late? Hindi, may na lang internet ko. So, lagi siyang gagawa ng alibi. Pero pag pinakita mo na, 
especially mm-hmm. coming from the office pa ah wala nang lusot yon and that's how you could possibly start your discussion your coaching Okay sir, so dapat pala may validation pa rin sir no, para um um hindi lang coach ka lang ng coach na ito yung gagawin or whatever, pero dapat may validation pa rin ng mga facts para at least hindi mo naman siya talaga huhulihin or what, pero at least alam niya ni record siya. Kasi we support are still working, oo. Yeah, support it with facts. Kakatawa yes. ano, na work from home na nga late pa. Diba? <laughs> Sir, ito po yung next question uh, from Nefty. What if someone is close-minded from other people's opinion? How can we start coaching that? Well, sabi nga sa inyo, coaching starts with fostering trust. The person is close because he doesn't trust you yet. He doesn't trust you yet. Ah, that's, that's my operative word, ah, yet. Kaya kailangan talaga establish the trust, foster the trust, rapport is there. You can have what you would call virtual water cooler sessions. Alam niyo yung um, catch up lang or pwede kayo mag-chat sa messenger. Hey, what's up? Ganyan. Oh, what are you working on right now? Oh, did you see the latest Netflix? Blah, blah, blah. So yung mga ganun ba na parang very personal and and casual conversations can actually start building the trust itself. Hindi mo pwede kasing simulan ng isang coaching conversations na pag-uusapan nyo kagad. Eh, very technical in nature. Kasi if that's the, how you would start it, the wrong foot uh, of of kicking off that ano, that coaching relationship. So it all starts with building trust. Build the trust first and the rapport and everything else will follow. Okay, sir. Um, Another question, sir. Ano, last three questions na tayo, sir. Ha? Sige, please. Uh, from Michelle Pineda, what if the management itself is not coaching but rather they are spoon-feeding the employees? How can I approach the management regarding on this scenario? And that is the reason as to why you're here. Because you're gaining new knowledge and insights about the importance and the relevance of coaching in any work environment, especially in the new normal. Kaya to the person who had asked that question, the challenge for you now is, how do you, how do you sell? Because if there is no coaching culture in management, may hirapan talaga tayong establish yan. Because everyone will just say, eh, busy tayo, wala na tayong panahon na mag-coaching. Tapos hindi tayo pwede mag-virtual coaching kasi hindi naman lahat na empleyado may magandang internet connection. So, the challenge now is have someone in HR or have someone, a senior manager for that matter, try out coaching. Pag nagkaroon ka na ng tao who would be able to to validate that coaching really works, then you have an advocate. The moment you have one advocate, you start with another senior manager. The moment that you have three of coaches, Diyan magsisimula ngayon yung, yung, yung magsasabi na, yes, we advocate or we support or we endorse coaching. And then, maybe in the end, it will establish coaching culture because of these advocates for coaching. So, start small. Not every company kasi would already have a coaching culture. Marami sa mga maliliit na kumpanya na hindi pa masyadong sanay sa coaching culture would be into what you would call a mentoring culture pa lang. Pero maganda, may mentoring ka na, may coaching ka pa. Okay, uh, from Roland Suiko, there are several types of coaching as mentioned. When you undergo training on coaching or enroll for coaching certification, kailangan bang very specific type or all of those mentioned will be taught in a training ideally? The principles of coaching are, you know, are there. Kaya, for example, underlying principles about the principle, it's there, you know. But how you apply it would actually be very relevant too. So, alimbawa, if you're applying for a certification as a life coach, you would have to go through scenarios so many just to be able to build your capability in addressing some life issues. If you're talking about business coaching, if you're talking about executive coaching, you would have to be exposed to a lot of scenarios that talks about CEO's problems, that talk about financial uh, concerns, etc. So in other words, you apply for a certain certification to get the foundational learning for coaching. But when it comes to the experience itself, it, talks, it, it requires you to get exposed in these types of coaching. Alimbawa, ikaw, anong gusto mong tutukan? Ako, I prefer to be a personal effectiveness coach. I prefer to be a life coach. If executive coaching is provided to me, I would appreciate it. But right now, marami sa mga nagiging kliyente ko at saka mga tumalapit sa akin are more into life coaching and personal effectiveness coaching. So I provide that. So it just my niche, okay? If you want to have a niche on ex- uh, executive coaching, then go ahead and get more of those so that you get honed into it. So, wala na, pwede mo rin naman sabihin na, I want to focus on executive coaching, go ahead and do so. 
look for start look for organizations that focus on executive coaching and you'll get the right certification that you so want and desire okay the last question sir from mine henosa what if the immediate superior superior who should be coaching is subordinate would like to pass his responsibility na wala siya teka lang sir ha? may <laughs> responsibility to someone else without giving any information on what the concerns are oh so, okay Yes, sir. Ayun, nakita ko yung gist niyan. Parang ayaw niya mag-coach sa tao niya. Gusto niya ibang tao mag-coach para sa kanya. Ganun ba yun? Ano, sir? Eh? Yung, yeah, po, parang ganun, sir. Oo. Pero hindi nga lang nagbigay na information dun sa concern. So, miscommunication na mangyayari rito, sir. Diba? Pag ganyan, hindi nagbibigay ng konting background about what is going correct, to be correct, coach. Correct. Parang ganun. Totoo yan. In fact, some leaders who are afraid of becoming coaches. So what they do is they pass on the, the accountability of coaching an individual to another person. Alam that's okay. That's part of it. That's part of um, that's reality. Sometimes we are not adept yet in coaching, so we would rather stay on the on the sidelight and side. No, no, hindi tayo sa limelight. Sidelight lang tayo. But we ask another person for him or her. Perfectly okay. However. Kung ipapasa mo sa isang individual ang coaching responsibility, let's say to another manager, kailangan naman, bigyan mo yung tao ng background as to who is that person, why does he need to be coached, why why am I being assigned to that coach rather than, let's say, me directly. Parang ganyan. So, please, don't be stingy when it comes to giving information about the person that is going to be coached. Kailangan naman make a little background with help. E tayo naman bilang coaches, Bahagi naman sa ating skill is uncovering the background of that individual, uncovering what the person has to say, and uncovering problems and issues. So yung mga ganon, hindi na kukuha sa isang coaching discussion. It takes a while. Usually two or three coaching scenarios or discussions, that's when you get to have the rapport starting to build. Ayun. So that's it. Sir, may pahabol pero parang nasagot nyo na. Can I ask one last question? How often yeah. do you need to conduct coaching? Okay. How often coaching... Now? Coaching meeting is different from a team meeting, okay? So, limbawa, meron kayong uh, project meeting. Project meeting yon. Keep it as it is. The coaching should come every two weeks, once a month. You know, if you're just starting the relationship as a coach and a coachee, I would recommend meeting every two weeks. Separate that from a team meeting, ha? Pag sinabing coach, the meeting and be consistent about it. In other words, if you're going, if you're going to schedule it on a Tuesday at 1 o'clock, Make sure that you always schedule it on Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Kasi, the moment na magsimula ka na mag-move tayo, mag-move tayo ng ganito, hindi nyo sineseryoso yung coaching itself. So the coaching has to be consistent so that eventually, it becomes circuitous, it becomes a rhythmic process for the coachee. And the coachee will appreciate it. Yeah, kasi consistent eh. Yeah. So every two weeks, you suggest, it's recommended. E kung medyo sanay na kayo, every month would be also be okay. And then for virtual naman, anytime. Okay, sir. That would be all for the questions. Thank wow. you. Wow. Thank you very much, Willie. Very, very happy that you had come here today. I, I know nung kung nakailan tayo, kung napapansin ko lang yung participants natin today. Pero, Sir Freddy, very thankful ako that we have had a good number of participants today. Some of them were unable to log in earlier, but I know on YouTube, they were able to log in too. And for that, I'm very thankful to every one of you and congratulations to all those who had won the discounted for our Twin Summit. Guys, punta kayo. Attend the Twin Summit. I tell you, you would get to learn a lot. 650 pesos within 65 hours. Just uh, screenshot nyo lang ito. It would be automatically saved in your uh, screenshot folder in your uh, in your Windows Explorer. Just press the, press the Windows and the print screen key, and then all of us uh, automatic, meron ka ng screenshot image. All right? So, Sir Freddy said that those who want to join our Viber group, please let us know by sending a Viber message to 0917-126-3889. That's also the GCash number of Sir Freddy. And you'll be part of our Total Rewards community and also of the HR practitioners community. You'll be able to attend our future courses all bordering towards leadership development, total rewards, organizational justice, and everything else that falls in between. All right. So, Sir Freddy, maraming salamat. Willie, everyone else in the room, 
Thank you very much. God bless you. And I hope that we'll get to see you in the Twin Summit and in our future courses. Yep. Thanks, Thank Anjo. Bye. God Thank bless you. everyone. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joy, thank you. Yeah, always. Joy. <laughs> All right, yeah. thank you, Joy. Always. Yeah. Loyalist, <laughs> si Ma'am. Loyalist. All right. <laughs> thank you. Loyalista, ba sobra.